Chuck Morse speaks. Good afternoon. This is your host, Chuck Morse, Monday through Friday, 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. <clears throat> Excuse me, right here in Boston, Massachusetts. The Cradle of Liberty, the Athens of America, the Shining City on the Hill. We've got uh, Dr. Oktar Babuna coming on. He's calling in from Istanbul, hopefully shortly, uh, in Turkey. Dr. Babuna is an activist on behalf of creationism. He's an opponent of Darwinism. He is talking in the Middle East about uh, the influence of uh, Darwinism and materialism, as he says, on Islam, which he contends is a negative thing. Uh, he came to my attention mainly because of my book, my book, my book, my book, available on Amazon Kindle, The Monkey Trial, Evolutionary Politics in the Post-Traditional Age. Check it out. It's available there. It's a book. It's all, it has almost how many words? It's almost 100,000 words. I worked very hard on this book. It took me well over a year to write this. And the thesis is one that I think resonates with uh, Dr. Babuna, who is actually going out and making speeches and uh, getting heckled and stirring people up both in, in Turkey, apparently, and um, in the Middle East and in Europe. I believe that uh, he is with us now. Dr. Babuna, how are you this afternoon? Thank you very much. It's a pleasure and honor to be with you. How are Thank you? Thank you, sir. Very well. Thank you for joining me. Um, I, was looking at, I was looking at some of your uh, YouTube videos, and I, have to, I admire your courage. You're out there speaking on this issue but quite publicly, and you're taking – both brickbats and praise for doing so, and it's, a, it's not an easy issue to talk about, is it? Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> the um, you know I, I'm just curious with regard to why this is a controversy in Islam at this point, because uh, I, I didn't realize that um, the theory of evolution had such an impact in the Islamic countries. Well, the, the Darwinism is being studied in all the schools throughout the Islamic world, including Turkey. And unidirectionally, and without giving any scientific evidence, which falsifies Darwinism. So, um, in that sense, 99% uh, of the people in the world in the 20th century believed in Darwinism as a, like right. a scientific fact. However, uh, scientific evidence falsifies Darwinism, and it should be taught in the schools, actually. For example, the impossibility of the proteins to emerge by chance, which falsifies Darwinism at the very beginning, uh, fundamentally. And also that there are no transitional forms, and the, uh, the uh, fossil evidence falsifies Darwinism. In, in fact, there are 400 million fossils. They, know, they, they are not, never mentioned in the school uh, curriculum, actually, the school books. And the problem with Darwinism is it inevitably leads to violence and the terrorism. And, uh, well, I want to get into that, that in a minute, and I entirely agree yeah. with you. But uh, your basic premise simply is that uh, the theory of evolution, there is not a shred of proof to back it up. So, therefore, the science of it is it's presented as absolute fact, but, in fact, it's a theory, and it's a hypothesis, in my opinion. And, and, that, and your objection is that it is being taught as absolute scientific fact and that people who disagree with it are attacked, and, and the same thing probably that happens in this country is, is happening in Turkey, I would imagine. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, actually, uh, evolution is falsified by Charles Darwin himself. If you look at the, uh, in his book, Origin of Species, and yep. I'm going to read a, a very short, a brief quote from uh, Charles Darwin. And Charles Darwin said in his book, Origin of Species, uh, if my theory be true, numberless intermediate varieties linking most closely all of the species of the same group together must assuredly have existed. He says evidences of evolution must have existed. Consequently, mm -hmm. evidence of their former existence could be found only among, uh, among fossil remains. So the, uh, the uh, evidences of evolution can only be found in the fossil remains, he says. But after right. that, he goes on. He says, wild species have descended from other species by insensibly fine gradations. Do we not everywhere see innumerable transitional forms? He said, if evolution is a fact, and there is a success in my variations over billions of years, then why don't we see the transitional forms? But as by this theory, innumerable transitional forms must have existed, he says. Why do we not find them embedded in countless exactly. numbers in the crust of the earth? After about a century and a half of looking for it, and, you know, I, I found the same quote, which is in my book also, The Monkey Trial, in that Darwin himself says in his journal that there would have to at some point be some fossil evidence that there had been a transitional species, and, um, and there's not. I mean, it's, it's been 150 years since the publication, over 150 years since the publication of Origin of Species in 1859, and there is still not a shred of evidence to prove 
that any one species evolves into a superior species or as they as the as the saying is actually race because the word species is just latin for race and that's what darwin's theory is it's a modern scientific race theory yes and uh, you're right i mean after 150 years for example Niles Eldridge, a very prominent darwinist paleontologist and museum creator a curator as you know he said yeah. the record jumps that's where that's where Niles Eldridge the record jumps and all the evidence shows that the record is real, he says. The gaps we see reflect real events in life's history, not the artifact of a poor fossil record. That's nice language. Stephen Jacob, for example, he said, the, fossil evidence, the fossils have two features, stasis, uh, they never change in their tenure on the earth, and the, uh, the second uh, feature of the fossil uh, evidence is sudden appearance. So that means, of course, creation, not evolution. Of yes. course, if, yeah, God would create through evolution, we would have the evidence of this. We would be defender of evo- creation through evolution. But there is no evidence, no transitional forms. So why should we defend evolution? It is not a science. Well, you know, the, the other thing is that I think that I know that Islam shares with Judaism and, and Christianity the belief that uh, we are created in the men and women, it says in the book of Genesis, are created in the image of God. And that sentiment was echoed in the American Declaration of Independence when Jefferson said that all men are created equal. That is something that, putting aside the science, which I think is there, it, the idea is that we all, are, we all are born equal, we all die equal, our souls are equal, we have equal rights under the law. And yet, if you, if you accept the theory of evolution, you have to conclude that all men are not created equal, that we are all at different levels on the evolutionary chain and that there are some people that are superior to others because of breeding, which is what the Darwinian theory is. It's a theory of breeding. Superior members of the alleged superior members of a species mate with other superior members, and then they give birth to superior generations, and then they proceed to kill out the inferior ones, which, of course, we could get into the politics of it. But uh, would I be correct to assume that Islam embraces that same idea as Judaism and Christianity? Yes, definitely. I mean, uh, I, I can give you an evidence from the Quran, and uh, Allah says Please. in the Quran, I speak refuge in Allah from a curse, Satan. I created you as uh, from a man and his wife, and created you in nations and tribes. Mm. But Allah uh, goes on in the, in the words, uh, there is no superiority according to races, but there is uh, according to the sincerity, Allah says. So Allah created nations and tribes to know each other, Allah says. So we created, there are, of course, there are, for example, Orientals, there are uh, African Americans, there are uh, Eskimos, yeah. Virgins, but just to know each other, it's, it's just a color. There is no superiority according to race, according to Quran, as it stated, and only to the sincerity, of course, the most sincere ones, the prophets, for example, more superior because of their sincerity, but not according to the race. Well, that's right, and, and I think that the Islamic language in the Quran is almost identical to that in the Torah and that we share this idea, which is contrary to the Darwinian view. I mean, the Darwinians in the late 19th century were shooting Aboriginal people in, in Australia and taking their skulls back to the laboratories to study them because they believed that, and Darwin said this in his second book, The Descent of Man, that the Aboriginals right. were closer to the baboon than they were to humans. So, you know, you know the, the only logical conclusion one could draw if they believe in the Darwinian theory, the unproven Darwinian theory, is that we are not equal, that we're all at different levels. And this is where the politics comes in. This is what you talk about. This particularly interests me, Dr. Babuna, when you point out that uh, this is a, it's, it's a, it's a philosophy of violence, of war. It is a philosophy that was the undergirding of both the Nazi socialist and the communist movements in that they believed, and they believed it with all sincerity, that it was their job in terms of the Nazis to evolve the species by creating a superior species, one that they called the Ubermensch. And in order to do that, they had to um, breed superior members, the blonde, blue-eyed members, to give birth to superior species and at the same time isolate and eventually annihilate inferior members of the species who were contaminating the the superior ones. And then, of course, Marx took the idea and ran with it and applied it to social organizations, that we would evolve into, you know, first capitalism and then socialism and then eventually the ultimate goal, which is communism. 
which all men would give up their individual identity and we would become an international beehive. So, you know, this is a very political idea, which I think goes to exactly why much of our elite establishment embraces it so fervently. It's the very cornerstone of their faith. You're, definitely, you're completely right. You have very powerful evidences. You're right. I mean, for example, Adolf Hitler said, take away Nordic Germans, nothing remains but the dance of apes. And he used, he used uh, Darwinism as the so-called scientific justification for bloody Nazi and uh, fascist ideologies. Because, as you said, Charles Darwin said in his book, The Central Man, he said, at some yeah. future period, not very distant measures by centuries, the civilized races of man will almost certainly exterminate and replace the savage races throughout the world. And according to Charles Darwin, as you know, the white uh, European man was the most evolved animals, and all other uh, races, blacks, aborigines, Pakistanis, including Turks, uh, are lower races close to monkeys, and will be exterminated. And these ideas, of course, were taken from Charles Darwin, applied into the fascism, and Nazi ideology as fascism, a struggle between the races, and into the Marxism by Karl Marx as the yeah. struggle and fight between uh, classes. And he used Darwinism as the, uh, the dialectics of the nature, and uh, he what built on the Marxism on top of that as dialectics of the history. And he used Darwinism as a so-called scientific justification of Marxism. In, for example, uh, Karl Marx said in one of the letters to, he wrote to Engels, this is the basis in natural history for our review. And he yes, mentioned, I, uh, I have that in my book, too, yeah. Okay, yeah. my guest is Dr. Oktar Babuna from Istanbul. We were talking about uh, the influence of Darwinism right now in the Islamic world, and that uh, Dr. Babuna has been giving a lot of public speeches, both in Turkey and in Europe. Uh, you're welcome to join the conversation, 347-327-9849. And we are back. Dr. Oktar Babuna is my guest. Uh, this being a news-driven program, I should mention a breaking story here. Suicide bombing at U.S. Embassy in Turkey kills two. Turkey's prime minister says at an outlawed Marxist group is responsible for a suicide bombing in front of the U.S. Embassy in Ankara, which killed the bomber and a Turkish security guard. Just uh, thought we would uh, announce that. I don't really – we could maybe develop the story um, as as the program proceeds, Dr. Oktar Babuna is my guest. Uh, Dr. Babuna, you are going around and speaking on this topic quite vociferously, and I really admire that. Can you tell me how people are responding to you? Well, actually, uh, it's uh, it's a long struggle of Mr. Adnan Oktar Harun Yahya from Turkey since 30 years, and mm -hmm. we uh, sent uh, mailed hundred thousands of copies of Atlas of Creation throughout the world to prominent. Uh, in, in, in academicians, in, to the universities, politicians in Europe and in the United States, free of charge. And that had a lot of impact. And I gave more than 1,000 conferences in major universities in U.S., U.K., Europe, Germany, Far East, Indonesia, Malaysia, Israel, Australia, Japan. So mm -hmm. the response is very, very good. It's getting, Darwinism is uh, going down, definitely, no question about that. And people are becoming more religious because if you put in the subconscious mind of the people, that there is no creator, life emerged by chance, and you owe your existence to a chance uh, by natural, to the natural event, uh, to, to, to the random event. Of course, that, this inevitably, with the, with the concepts of Darwinism, struggle for survival, survival of the fittest, and the strong individuals survive by crushing the weak individuals, it leads right. violence and the terror. But if you put in the, uh, in the, the scientific evidences, it will definitely eradicate Darwinism, and people will understand there is a creator because the complexity of the, and the immaculous, delicate balances throughout the universe shows there is a creator which is almighty and has an omnipotent mind and omnipotent power. That means, of course, they are responsible. And then, of right. course, we find out how, uh, to live according to uh, moral values such as, for example, uh, justice, peace, tolerance, and compassion, mercy, love against uh, all other people. And this is in three divine religions. In Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, it is the same. There is no difference in that point. So we live in the same God, we love the same prophets. There is compassion, mercy, love, tolerance, and justice. We just spoke of, for example, there, is a, there was an attack. We feel sorry about that to American embassy in Turkey. But yes. this is because of because of Darwinist education, you talked about the Marxist group. But if you put in the subconscious mind Darwinism, it inevitably leads to violence and terror. You cannot stop that. But we know, for example, in Islam, murdering one innocent person, Allah says, is like murdering entire humanity, saving yes. one person's life, saving entire humanity. So 
There is no justification for terrorism. There is no justification for killing, murdering innocent people in Islam. It is haram. That means it is unlawful against the Quran. So we you know radicalism and bigotry uh, has emerged in throughout the Islamic world that are uh, so-called Islamic terrorists. But there is no Islamic terrorist. Somebody well, well let, me ask you, let me ask you this, Dr. Babuda. Do you draw yeah. a connection between the influence of Darwinism and Islamic terrorism? Well, the, uh, Islamic terrorism is a misconception, actually. Terrorism originates from Darwinism because, as you know, in the Muslim countries, because of Darwinist education, Palestine has become Marxist, Arab socialism. Right. At the time, of George Habash was a Marxist, as you know. I Saddam know, yeah. was Marxist, black mentality, and ex a combined extreme nationalism with Arab socialism, which is Marxism. Yep. Libya Qaddafi is Marxist. Mar well, the, the Ba'ath uh, socialist movement is, um, is a mix between Islam, which they keep around for, for window dressing, and, and socialism. And that is the political movement that gave birth to Gaddafi, to Assad, who is still a Ba'ath socialist, and Saddam exactly. Hussein. So, yes, I, I definitely yes, agree. Exactly. I mean, Syria, uh, Marxist mentality is prevailing. And also in Egypt, Nasser, because of, uh, since Nasser's time, Marxist mentality, Jordan, Tunisia, Everywhere, yes. wherever you look, you see uh, Darwinist materialist and Marxist mentality prevailing. So people distance away from religious concepts. Radicalism and extremism has emerged. And this yes. is because of Marxist ideologies, violence, terror has emerged. But that does not have to do with the Islam, true Islam. In true Islam, the people of the book, Christians and Jews are called people of the book. And you cannot have enmity and hatred against them. Actually, Allah says monasteries, churches, synagogues are the places, mosques are the places to be protected. And Allah says, if the people of the world argue with them only in the kindest way, and Muslim men are allowed to marry a Jewish and Christian wives, we can mm -hmm. eat your meal, it's halal for Muslims, it's lawful, so we can socialize with them. And if you, know, uh, if you might remember at the time of the Ottoman Empire, we live yeah. in peace with Jews and Christians for centuries, and the synagogues and churches, they had the freedom of well, worship. The Ottoman the Empire was, was very peaceful up until the time that the young Turks, who were Marxist, they uh, they took over and they they made the sultan into a figurehead and then they launched a genocide against the Armenians. So, I think that you make a very good point on that. I mean, it certainly is an aberration of traditional Islam, and that uh, and also the mullahs that surround the Ayatollah Khomeini. A lot of them, and I did some in, some research on this for a book that I'm hoping to publish soon. That uh, that they were trained in Moscow. They were communists. Dressed, exactly. in, dressed in dressed in traditional Islamic garb to make it look, you know. I mean, it, it, it was it was the same ideology, but the, but the underlying philosophical theme there is that the only morality in in the theory of evolution is the the famous statement, survival of the fittest. What right. power begets power. The whole idea is to to gain earthly power and then to transform mankind into a superior being, whether it be the, the, the Nazi version, which is a superior being biologically, or whether it be the communist version, which is a superior being socially or, or politically. There is yeah, no basic yeah. moral underpinning. The, human beings are just expendable. We're not created in the image of God. We're just animals that are evolving. This is fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah, um, you right, yeah. yeah. Dr. Babuna, have you, have you uh, encountered a lot of resistance from your speeches? Because I know that you've been speaking on this topic in college campuses across Europe, across Asia. What's going on with that? I mean, are you, are you experiencing um, – what sort of opposition are you experiencing? Yes, uh, you're right. I mean, at the, at the beginning we had a lot of opposition, but now it's getting weaker and weaker, and it's become much more powerful because we give scientific evidences. I mean, for example – if, uh, if I talk about Darwinism, we talk mm -hmm. about proteins. Of course, uh, we check if the proteins can emerge by chance or not. If for a single protein molecule to emerge by chance, it is impossible. There are trillions of different protein molecules in the millions of species. And uh, out of the trillions of protein molecules, single protein molecule cannot emerge by chance because other proteins, at least 100 enzymes, proteins, must exist to produce proteins. Proteins can only be produced by proteins. This is not enough. DNA must coexist because right sequence of the protein is coded in the DNA. This is not enough. Yeah. Energy is required. The mitochondria, the energy organelle of the cell must exist. A complete living cell must exist to produce the first protein, and this is a fatal blow to Darwinism. So if you read scientific evidences, people are convinced very easily. That's the reason why 
uh, uh, people are, uh, the Darwinism is getting, uh, going down. And we, we know there are many polls throughout the world, in the United States, in Europe, in the United Kingdom. For example, in 2008, there was a poll uh, published in The Guardian, and they said 75% of, uh, of the British people do not believe in Darwinism anymore. Only 25% oh, of the British people. I'm sorry? No, that's amazing. I mean, that's, that's substantial. I mean, it, it seems to be a growing movement. That's great. Yeah, that was 2008. They said only 25% of the people believe without any doubt, any question into Darwinism. So you see, Darwinism was most uh, strongest in the United Kingdom. Now it is, it is very weak now, getting weak. And in the Middle East, the same way, in the Far East, wherever look, we, we see that because scientific evidence is, cannot, uh, cannot be denied. It is science. That's right. Of course, you know, I, I don't think that, and I don't think Darwinism was ever something that was embraced by most people. It was always an elitist establishment view, uh, very much um, in the amongst the, the the powerful, and that uh, it's been indoctrinated. I mean, we're all taught Darwinism from a very early age, and we also get the message pretty clearly, at least in this country, that if you disagree with it, then you know you're, you're seen as. Um, somehow a, 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 an ignorant or evil person. I mean, this goes back to the Scopes trial and the way people were portrayed in that movie that uh, disagreed with, um, you know, the the position of um, uh, of Clarence Darrow and, and uh, John Scopes, that they're ignorant, that they're backward. I know that when I ran for Congress, I had a very bitter, long campaign against Barney Frank, and we brought up all kinds of issues. But the only time I saw him get angry was when he brought up the fact on a, on a television show here in Boston that I had written an article years earlier questioning the theory of evolution. He was visibly angry over this. He looked like he was going to blow a gasket over it. And, and, and it was because it was something that's so fundamental. And he held it up as, and said, this is proof that Chuck Morse does not deserve to hold public office. He believes this. I mean, this is like... Yeah, and unfortunately, a lot of people believed him. You know, they were like, "Yes, isn't that?" It was shocking. You know, it's, it's like a scandal. And uh, you know, that's that's sort of, I think, what we're all up against here. But when you tell me that more and more people are actually taking a look at the science of this and seeing how bizarre it is, I mean, the idea, first of all, that man, that human, that life in general somehow just popped out of nowhere because of the colliding of two inanimate objects. And then somehow out of that life evolves these complex creatures just by, by mating. I mean, it's obviously absurd. It's, it's something that doesn't make any sense by, by, any, you know, by any lights. So, you know, you're doing a great job, I think, uh, Oktar, in terms of exposing this. And I, it looks to me like you're having a lot of influence, and I really appreciate that. Now, do you have any books out that you'd like to talk about, or where can people get information about you and your work? Yes. And, uh, for, first of all, the, the website of uh, Mr. Harun Yahya. Harun Yahya is his pen name, actually, Mr. Adnan Oktar. He has 300 books translated to 75 languages and 800 websites. The main website for information would be www.harunyahya.com. Dot com, Harun Yahya dot com, and I will uh, spell it actually H A R U N H A H. Uh, I'm sorry, H A R U N Y A H Y A. Harun Yahya dot com. They can, uh, our uh, brothers and sisters there can download his books uh, free of charge. All the, and the hundreds of documentaries and 300 books, and uh, some of them are science, politics, and uh, religiously related actually. So mm -hmm. and, and they can read them, increase their knowledge, and uh, please spread this truth to other people because Darwinism is not an innocent ideology. It's, it's actually a religion. Now, I want to read a quote from Richard Dawkins, actually. Dawkins please. said, before Darwin, before Darwin, it was difficult to be an intellectually fulfilled atheist, and Darwin made it easy to become an intellectual atheist. And that is the reason why Darwinism is defended against so many scientific evidences. And there is a, yes. as you know, as you, as you uh, uh, talked about a little while ago, there is a Darwinist dictatorship. Of course, uh, we know that. And in some, uh, you know, in the schools, for example, people are against Darwinism. They are expelled from universities. They, you know, in the, in the media, they are being attacked. That is true. There is a Darwinist dictatorship to protect Darwinism nonsense as like right. a religion and an ideology. But with the scientific struggle, 
it can be eradicated. And that's the reason uh, our alliance is very important. Alliance of the Christian Jews and Muslims coming together. This will solve all the conflicts, actually, in the Middle East, everywhere. It will bring a golden age. It will bring uh, progress in science, technology, and art. It eradicate this ideology of violence and the terror and the bloodshed. In the 20th century, everybody suffered from that. World War I, World War II, communism, fascism, and, and then uh, racism, anarchism, terrorism, all founded upon the concepts of Darwinism. However, yes, in three are. divine religions, there is compassion, mercy, love, tolerance, justice. What is that we cannot share? There is enough land for everybody in the world. So let's ally together. Even the unbelievers are, uh, they, they are the first-class citizens. Of course, nobody can force anybody to believe in anything. So with our alliance, good people coming together like yourself, for example. Thank you very much for doing this program. It is very good, actually. And Thank so you. we will live in peace, in uh, compassion, mercy, love. And everybody will happy, be happy from that. No, look at it. I mean, I think, first of all, we have to realize that in the United States, um, Darwinism, the theory of evolution, that is the state religion. It's legal here. That was declared as such by the Supreme Court in several court cases and by the state of, uh, first by the state of Tennessee and then eventually by the Supreme Court. And the way they did this in the United States was that they simply declared Darwinism as a science, not as a religion. And therefore, it is the legal doctrine. It's the official creation story in the United States. And to, to, to oppose it is actually, um, at least certainly in our school systems and in our public schools, you're, you're going against the law now. You're not allowed to present any alternative creation theories. There's only one creation theory, and that's the theory of evolution. Um, but uh, but what you're saying is that uh, that that in spite of this kind of um, monopoly, if you will, on, on this particular point of view, people are beginning to question it. I've advocated in my book that that uh, the theory of evolution be taught as a philosophy and creationism also be taught as a philosophy, not as a religion, and let them be let let students take a look at the two different philosophies and let them compare and contrast them and let them argue about it rather than trying to insist that Darwinism is science when there's not a shred of proof. And um, I think that uh, that seems to me generally to be where things are going. I hope it is. Yes, I definitely agree with you. And Mr. Adam Uptar says Darwinism should be definitely taught in the schools. So you, you, right. cannot, you cannot force anybody to, uh, from uh, learning from something. He says also Marxism should be taught in the schools. Fascism should be taught in the schools, Satanism, Buddhism, and all three divine religions should be taught in the schools. But if you teach Darwinism in detail, for example, they can, he says, they can put it like 100 pages uh, talking about Darwinism. And then only three, four pages for uh, evidences which falsify Darwinism is enough. For impossibility well, I don't even think they have that. Chance. I'm sorry? I mean, there's not even that much in, in, in the, the school system in the United States. There's just no questioning it at all. It's just presented as hard science. People have thought know, this yeah. is how the world began, and that's that. I mean, a, to question it is still a big, big taboo, as I found out. It's just, uh, it's just not done. Now, uh, the, the theory of evolution has, has made major inroads in, in religion, certainly in Judaism and Christianity, and I would imagine Islam as well. I mean, how are they doing that? Well, uh, there is nothing about evolution in the Quran. There is always examples of sudden creation in the Quran. For example, the transformation of uh, Moses' staff uh, and many throws this on the, on the ground. It transforms into a living snake all of a sudden with the word be of God. And then Jesus used the shape uh, uh, to a model like a bird and breathes into that in the Quran. It's stated and it transforms into a living bird. And then and their angels are created. Of course, they, they are not created through the evolution. There is nothing about evolution in the Quran. Mm. What some Muslims uh, fall into the trap, they see Darwinism as a majority, and they try to find a middle path in between Darwinism and Islam, and they try to twist, uh, by, try, by t twisting the, some verses in the Quran, they try to put evolution in the Quran, but there is nothing about evolution in the Quran. And we know yeah. this from the scientific evidence. We have 400 million fossils, 400 million fossils, more than enough. But there are no transitional forms, no pathological it's magical transition. You know, it's it's quite it, that's quite a statement, I suppose, to a Muslim. You could say, exactly, show me where in the Quran does it mention the theory of evolution, and and I, as a Jew, could say, where in the Torah 
I don't know if I could get away with that in my community, but uh, where in the Torah does it say the theory of evolution? It says that uh, we have, and by the way, science, a lot of geneticists now say, speaking of science, that they believe that all of mankind is descended from one mother. They call it the mitochondrial Eve. And more recently, from one father, whom they call the Y chromosome Adam. So if, if we're going to talk science and strict science, there's actually more scientific evidence from the th- field of genetics that point to at least a, um, an image of or an approximation of the, of the Genesis story. Nothing that indicates that we simply life formed out of the crashing together of dead objects and, and that, as Darwin said, we all sort of emerged out of a warm, small pond. I mean, that's a, I mean, the whole idea is preposterous if you think about it. Like if you take a look out of the microscope of, a, of the eye of a bee, you're going to see thousands of perfectly geometrically shaped shapes and colors all laid out absolutely perfectly. Uh, you know, Darwin himself in his, in his uh, diary said that the sight of a peacock's feather made him sick. And the reason it made him sick was because when you take a look at one single peacock's feather with all of its perfectly aligned and intricate uh, shapes, all you know, absolutely perfect with the colors, you cannot believe that that simply happened because of random mating. There's something, there's obviously some kind of a design to it, maybe even an intelligent design. Anyway, yes. Uh, yes. I want to... Yeah, life, please. Yeah, life, life emerged all of a sudden. The first cyanobacteria fossil was found in the Australia Church region. Emerged all of a sudden in 3.8 billion years ago. 3.8 billion years ago, cyanobacteria, which can move photosynthesis. We, can, we have cyanobacteria today. So they never changed for 3.8 billion years. Emerges all of a sudden, which can move photosynthesis. And in fact... This is the only explanation because we know from the genetics and molecular biology there is no mechanism that Allah created, uh, this is a scientific fact, which can generate new genetic information. So we had all the living things with all of the complexities all of a sudden. For example, at the Cambrian period, about 525 million years ago, 504 million years ago, 50 different phylums, phylums mean different animal groups according to body structures, appear all of a sudden, only before the Cambrian period, only three phylum exist. In Cambrian, 50 of them exist. All of a sudden, with complex eye systems, circulations, gills appear all of a sudden, and they decrease up to 35 until now. So this is, this is of course, uh, creation. Sudden appearance means creation. Cyanobacteria, the first life, appears all of a sudden. And that is the reason why Richard Dawkins was asked in the movie Expelled to explain the origin of life. You know what he said in, in this uh, movie? He couldn't okay. explain the origin of life in the Earth. He said, uh, I don't know what happened, but he said, aliens, aliens from the space. Oh, my God, really? Oh, that's funny. He admitted admitted that life could not emerge by chance like evolution states in the Earth, but we know the physical laws everywhere is the same. So impossibility of life emerged uh, in this Earth is everywhere the same in the galaxies. Proteins cannot emerge by chance anywhere in the universe. That means he admitted life could not emerge by chance. Well, you know, he was kind of admitting that it had to have occurred spontaneously. Even Noam Chomsky, right here at MIT, who is considered one of the nation's experts in linguism, as, as, an, as a linguist, excuse me, he said, and I actually, he actually said it on my program, I interviewed him, that all language occurred spontaneously. It didn't evolve. Yes. Somehow it just happened instantaneously. All men all over the world they they were they they had the ability to speak and they began to speak, and I asked him. I said, "Doesn't that seem to indicate that the uh, the Bible is true?" And he's, "Oh no 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 no, of course not. We 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 have theory of evolution, but but he didn't really connect those dots. But what you're saying and what what the Bible says basically is that these things were that we are who we are and we were who we were. That a man today is no different than." than Moses or Jesus or, or, or any, any anyone going way back. We're not evolved. We are the same. I mean, the fact that we're bigger and they were fatter and they were healthier, that's not because we've evolved. It's because we have more knowledge in terms of how to save our own lives. And we know how to build refrigerators and we know how to build superhighways and we've made life easier for us. We don't have to hunt for food all the time. But we're not evolved biologically. We're the same. We're the same people as we always were. 
and that there is, you know, we're immutable. I mean, that that we're created in the image. It's not an evolving species. Yes, we know from genetics and molecular biology, as I stated, there is no mechanism which uh, generates new genetic information. So there is only mechanism from genetics right. and molecular biology, the shuffling of the genes, which which means the shuffling of the genes, different combination of genetic information is generated, but all already existing genetic information, and that generates variation, different human races, for example, the blacks, orientals, white, white people. So, but this is not evolution because there is no new genetic information, and genetic information is the same from the very beginning. I know Noam Chomsky, yes, he, mm. he admitted actually in his book that you're right, that the language, uh, language, the language grammar, the gram ability for the speak with the grammar, he says, grammar is so complex, we cannot even explain it, must have been innate from the birth. So, uh, for example, three, four-year-old child speaks, to, uh, speaks English, speaks Turkish, or speaks French with a very complex grammar. But it's not, by, by, uh, it's not thought by the parents or anybody else. You cannot teach grammar to anybody because you cannot explain the grammar. So, Noam Chomsky actually admits that yes. this must be innate. That, um, that's like uh, uh, something inspired uh, th this grammar to people. And that is our soul, actually. You know, that, must have, right. that makes us different from the apes. You know, we can speak, we can make civilizations, we can build cities, we can take the electron microscope and do research on reason. our own because we are humans with soul. Apes are apes. That's right. Humans are and when Adam, named the, when Adam named the plants and he named the animals, that was the beginning of human reason. I mean, it was something that happened spontaneously. But uh, I've interviewed uh, Oktar. I've interviewed scientists. I mean, I've done a lot of programming on this topic over the years, and people who are defenders of evolution. And what they do is they'll hold up two different species, like two different fruit flies, and they'll do a, there'll be a big scientific peer review article about this, and they'll say, look, one of them has spots and the other one doesn't. This proves evolution. And, I, I, and my, my response is it doesn't prove anything. All it proves is that they're two different fruit flies. But, you know, they will eventually admit, I mean, they may be yelling at me and screaming and kicking, and they may even hang the phone, but they will eventually admit that there is no proof that one has evolved into a superior uh, member. This just, and that's because there is no proof. And uh, it's very important simply to point that out. And, but when you do, the reaction can be pretty uh, bombastic, I must say. Yes. I mean, we know today in detail in genetics and molecular biology, there is only mechanism of shuffling of the genetic information. And all, uh, through, through the replication of the DNA, the genetic information is passed from generation to generation, but it's shuffled in, 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 in individuals and in the, uh, at the groups in the subspecies level. And that generates variation, but variation is not evolution because there is no new genetic information, no new proteins, no new organs, no new exactly. species. It is, it is a mechanism created by God uh, that generates variation, which is, for example, there are smaller dogs, there are German shepherds, there are mm -hmm. uh, Danawas, there are larger ones, but this is variation at the subspecies level. There is no new de genetic information, and this genetic no, it's information... Adaptation. Been... It's, it's adaptation, which is why, for example, some people have darker skin than other people because they live, their ancestors live closer to the equator, and so you need to have darker skin to protect you from the sun rays, whereas if you live up in the, you know, in Norway, you have lighter skin because there's, a, there's less sun and there's a longer you know, winter, so you, your body, your skin needs to absorb more sun. So, you, you know, it's, this is not, it's not a, a matter of evolution unless, of course, you're a racist. I mean, it's simply yes. a matter of adaptation. You're ad adapting over time to the environment. It's not... Uh, anything more than that. I mean, this is, you know, biologically speaking, genetically speaking, we're the same. I mean, the, you know, the, the Laplander is the same as the, uh, you know, as someone from the Congo. There's no difference. It's just, it's just an, a different adaptation. Yes. We know today, uh, which makes us with different skin colors, is at least three genes, probably more than that. Maybe five right. genes. Uh, we don't know the exact number. And different combination of these genes, they are called alias, actually, Different combination of these genes generates different skin color, but these genes have been existing from the very beginning. There is no mechanism that can generate new genetic information. There is only replication and shuffling of the genes, and this genetic information, which may give the skin colors, has been existing from the very beginning. Of course, this is not 
uh, evolution. And adaptation is, there is mechanisms of adaptation created. We know this genetically also today from molecular biology. For example, if you put a bacteria in an environment where there is glucose, the bacteria uses, they call the operons actually, uh, the gene groups close together, which metabolizes glucose. But if you take this bacteria, for example, E. coli, put in another environment where there is only lactose but no, no glucose, but this bacteria shuts down the genes which produces the enzymes to metabolize glucose, and instead it uh, opens up another genetic uh, information which uses lactose as a metabolite, metabolizes lactose, produces the proteins, enzymes which metabolizes lactose. This is called adaptation. But the mechanism of adaptation is the, this genetic information which produces the proteins, metabolizes the glucose and lactose, exists from the very beginning. It only shuts, on, uh, shuts off uh, or, or on uh, when, when there is an environment there is glucose or lactose. But this right. is not evolution. This is a beautiful mechanism created by God. And this uh, mechanism of adaptation uh, uh, exists in all the living beings. That's right. I mean, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't evolve. It's just part of the nature of human beings and, and probably of animals. It's not something that we've got more of or less of. And, you know, I, I like to remind people that the word to evolve means to become superior. It's to become better. It's not a, um, a static term. You know, when somebody evolves, like they said, Barack Obama evolved on the issue of gay marriage, which <laughs> whether you or I agree with that or not, the point is that what they were saying was he had grown. He had become more enlightened, if you will. And so the word evolve is used in that manner, and that's exactly how Darwin used the word, that the species was evolving into superior planes, whereas eventually out would pop a new species. That's what this theory is, and it's wrong. It's bizarre, and it's dangerous politically. When you put it into a political and social context, it's dangerous. I think the reason why our, our international establishment types have embraced this and have insisted on it is because it does it is atheistic it does replace god in heaven with uh in people's minds anyways with them as the uh, great administrators and they can then manipulate they believe all rights come from them i mean rights are not rights they're privileges that are granted by the state which they worship anyway but um i want to thank you so much for joining me dr Oktar babuna thank you very very much and uh, I, we love Americans. Americans are very nice people, sincere people, highly educated. And, you know, majority of Americans are very religious people. So I hope I've worked without Darwinism. You know what Richard Dawkins said recently? He said, I don't want to live in a Darwinist world, he said. And he is right in that because <laughs> Darwinism, wherever Darwinism goes, it brings only harm to the, to the society. It brings uh, harm to the people. So uh, we hope there's a golden age is coming. We're living in the end times according to three divine religions. And... Jesus is our prophet. We love him, we obey him, and, and in the Quran it is definitely stated Jesus will return in the end times, and this is the times we are living in. And the yes. Mahdi of Islam and the King Messiah of Judaism is the same person, because the signs given in the Torah and the Hadith are exactly the same. So this is the times, end times, because all the signs came to be true, given uh, in the Hadith and in the Torah, in the Bible, and there will be a golden age without Darwinism and materialism and without this uh, ideologies of uh, suffering and uh, violence and the terror. So a golden age is coming with progress in science, technology, and art. So this is the time for alliance of the Christians, Jews, and Muslims, and this entire world will change. And this is very close by the hope. Well, amen to that. And um, you know, I, I'd like to please stay in touch with me and let me know what you're up to from time to time. I'd like to have you back and. I'll be sending you over a podcast of this interview, and let's, uh, let's work together on these things. Definitely. And, uh, Thank you very, very much. May God bless you. May God, God bless, bless America. You. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Oktar Babuna. We are, you're listening to Chuck Morse Speaks. We'll be right back after these messages.